Uh, Michael, uh, walk us through that sack on Saturday and, and just how it feel be at, be back out there and be able to make a play like that. Uh, man, it felt great. Uh, we got a great call in from Shu, and uh, basically we was going off the center slide, and uh, I ripped the egg out, and I made a play. Thanks to my uh, teammates. Yeah, Coach just got done talking about how a lot of teams are getting rid of the ball re relatively quickly for you guys. First off, like when, when it gets to getting home, how short has the, the clock inside your head gotten? And how much, how often do you want to jump up and knock passes down, I guess, and get into the passing lane as opposed to getting home because they're getting the ball out so quickly? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, basically, like with, with, when teams start to get the ball out so fast, like that's all we can do is get a better ball, get your hands up, and affect the passer in any, any kind of way. How much have you looked forward uh, on tape to this Ball State game? What have you seen from them? Any concerns you have? Uh, Ball State's going to be another great opponent. They're a good team. They have a lot of experience up front. I believe uh, every one of their old linemen, except for the right guard, has played upward of 20 starting game, with 20 games. So that's a lot of experience. Uh, I'm just ready. I'm really excited to play and see what they have for us. Michael, I feel like we're used to you kind of rushing more from the maybe the, the five or, or seven technique spots, but you rushed a lot from the three and more on the inside the other day, including your sack that you got. What does it mean to really be able to rush from either the inside and the outside as a defensive lineman? Uh, I, just, I just feel like it's a great way uh, UGA uses me. Like, it shows all my position versatility, and like, it allows me to get in and affect the quarterback. Hey, Michael, I guess I'd just ask you about expectations, and I know how the team handles them, but you know, looking at your resume, two starts last year, but preseason first team all SEC and Nagurski list and uh, Lombardi list and the expectations for leading the team in sacks, how do you personally deal with that? Does it, does it motivate you? Does it keep you going knowing, um, I guess, the expectations and the high potential that everyone sees in you? Uh, that's a great question. I do use it as motivation, but I really don't look into it like, I have high expectations for myself, like, way higher than any of those. Like, it's really for me. I do this for me. you expect to sack every game? <laughs> yes, sir. I got high expectations for myself. How would you assess the defense's play as a whole? You know, they were 2 of 14 on fourth down. You know, you guys got four tackles for loss. Just overall, how would you assess, you know, to you how they played? We played pretty decent, but there's always stuff we can improve on. Like, we gave up a couple of explosives that we said that shouldn't happen. And uh, that's always stuff we go back to the drawing board and fix. Okay, what did you think uh, you guys as a defensive line played on Saturday? Uh, what would you take from how y'all played? Uh, it wasn't to our standard. We played pretty solid. It was plays, but there was stuff we could have uh, could have changed and, and better better played. Yes, sir. I was talking to Dazier after the game, and he said that when. Uh, um, that they called you a mini Trayvon Walker, that he brought uh, Trayvon over and compared you to him. I mean, what does it feel to be compared to a guy like that, especially by your teammate? Uh, it feels great with, with how he went and how he projected and how, and how, he, he, how he's doing in the NFL. It's a great comparison, but, you know, I'm me and he's him. We're two different players. We're going on our two different paths. You guys had a lot of moving parts in week one, a lot of injured people, a lot of bodies subbing in and out. How would you say the communication was just overall between the players on the defense and the coordinators on the sideline, just getting everybody in the right place at the right time? That's a great question. Uh, the communication has been on point. Like That's something we hop on by communicating, using our centers and talking. And that's something that we continue to work on every day here. Yes, sir. It seems like when you guys rush, it's very team-oriented rush. It's not like one guy that gets a lot of the sacks or even the stats. I think Trayvon's career high was four and a half sacks, and he's first overall pick. Mm -hmm. When you get here, how much of a it's not about me do you have to like overcome, or did you come in already knowing that? Uh, you learn that. You learn that like, as soon as you get here, like day one, this is a team, and everything we do here is for the best of the team, for the betterment of the team. Like we rush as a unit here. There's no individual I, 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 me guys. Like all of us are team, team players, and we rush as a unit. Yes,
Michael, well, you mentioned no I, I, me, me, me guys, but yeah. this year you guys are playing without a guy like Jalen Carter, who obviously did so much, you know, made such a difference. How, you know, that with him being not here, how differently do you guys have to play for this line to be successful? I uh, really just got to play our game. Really just stick to what we do and do our stuff. We should be successful. Yes, Either after the game or after rewatching the film of the game, what were some of the biggest points of emphasis that uh, Coach Scott went over with you guys to improve on this week? Uh, basically just striking up front and uh, keeping our man hand home and, and standing in our gaps. Yes, okay, we had a chance to talk to uh, Makai today. Uh, his journey, you're smiling. Uh, yeah. What's he like, you know, just from that journey? And uh, does he ever talk some trash if he gets past you through the D-line? <laughs> yeah, Muse, yeah. No, nah, he's, he's a great guy. He's a great athlete. He works super hard. And I'm just happy he really, he really got his chance to shine. Yes, Yeah, I noticed George, freshman Jordan Hall was in there with you on those rush packages. What have you seen from him that's allowed him to be in that spot where he's contributing game one for you guys? Uh, basically, his work ethic. Uh, his work ethic and how violent he is with his hands and how he, and how he rushes. Like He's he's a great player, and he's going he's gonna to be real impactful for us this year. What's the key to practicing and playing consistent, you know, as you continue to grow? I mean, obviously, a lot of expectations like talked about, but how do you make sure you're meeting your standards daily? Uh, you kind of said it already, like practice execution. Like, if you go out and practice and ball out nine times out of ten, you're going to have a good game. Like, just show up and practice, and you'll show up in the game. Michael, it feels like we saw Malachi, Tyke, Javon fly all over the field yesterday. How important is that relationship between you and the rest of the defensive line and that secondary for creating a really strong defense? Could you repeat the question? Yeah. Uh, I mean, just uh, I mean, guys like Malachi were flying all over the field making tackles. How important is the relationship between you and the defensive line and that secondary for creating a really strong defense? Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. So we work, we work, we work as a unit. Like the front helps the back, and the back helps the front. Like they help us in pass situations situation by covering guys. We help them up front by striking blocks and against separation for the guys to run through the lane. Like we work together. Yes, sir. Have any more questions for Michael? All right, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, sir.